Um, thousands march on Washington to demand ceasefire in Gaza. Flyers indicate protests. Uh, protesters came from as far as Florida, Minnesota, Texas, and Wisconsin to protest war and U.S. aid to Israel. Thousands of marchers descended on Washington, D.C. on Saturday to call for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza and to protest U.S. aid to Israel more than three months into an Israeli offensive against Hamas that is killing 250 Palestinians per day, according to the Oxfam charity. I had a dream. <laughs> the protest called a march on Washington for Gaza was promoted as likely to be the largest pro-Palestinian demonstration in the U.S. since the 7 October attack on southern Israel by Hamas fighters emerging from Gaza, which killed almost 1,200 people and led to a massive military response from Israel backed by the U.S. government. Oxfam said the Israeli bombardment has displaced 1.8 million of the 2.3 million Palestinians living in Gaza and turned much of the besieged territory bordering Israel, the Mediterranean Sea, and Egypt into rubble and dust. Saturday's protest, organized by the American Muslim Task Force for Palestine and aligned groups, was organized to draw attention to what it calls Israel's quote, crimes against humanity, unquote, and articulates a position that the creation of a fully recognized Palestinian state is in U.S. national interests. Among those addressing the crowd in Washington by video link was Al Jazeera journalist Wael al Dado, whose wife, daughter, two sons, and a grandchild were killed by Israeli airstrikes. Also speaking were long-shot U.S. presidential candidates Cornell West, or as we call him around here, friend of the show, Cornell West, <laughs> and Jill Stein, as well as a daughter of Malcolm X, Ilyasa Shabazz. Aldado spoke about the dire conditions Palestinians in Gaza are struggling to exist in while under Israeli bombardment. Quote, the people are paying an exorbitant price and are living a disastrous life, he told the crowds in Washington. People do not have sustenance, food, or drink, a place to sleep, a bathroom, and is what and what is necessary for a life, not for a decent life, rather what is basically necessary to maintain life. Understand not not he's not talking about um, having a nice bedroom. He's talking about just the basic necessities of life. So this is a little video from Al Jazeera. We're gonna take a look at a little bit of that. This wasn't just a message to Israel. It was a message to Joe Biden. Use the U.S.'s leverage to stop the bombardment of Gaza. He's not going to get reelected if he doesn't hear the people. We're out in the streets by the thousands, and he just chooses to ignore that we actually exist. Listen to He's your fire now. Stop ignoring your constituents. Listen to reason. The nickname for Biden right now is Genocide Joe. He has shown this time around, which is a bit different, is a complete and utter disregard for the value of human life. For the protesters, this White House is directly responsible for the deaths of so many Palestinians. It's been reported that the Biden presidential campaign isn't that concerned. It's betting that by next November's election, this anger will have been replaced by fear of another Trump presidency. But those here say they will not forget. Trump wanted to deport us and Biden is killing us. So that fear factor no longer works. The fear mongering um, of oppressed communities no longer works on us anymore. A message that apparently hasn't got through yet to this White House. Shia Bertansi, Al Jazeera, Washington. So I, I know it was always naive, and the American press was never what people thought it was. But at one time, th the assumption was that American news was better than what you would get from other sources. And now, How long ago would you as say? Americans, I, I would say up until about 10 years ago, people felt that way. I'm not saying yeah, it was right, the reality, right. but they felt that way. And now I think it's become increasingly, on, it's increasingly common that one would feel, well, I want the real news. I have to go to Al Jazeera. I, I have Al to go to America. these. Do you remember uh, Al Jazeera America? Yeah. Yeah. I remember watching but, that. But 10 like, years ago, people, I think the average American would have said, that's propaganda. I've and I, I think yeah. there are many more people today who feel like, if you want the real story, you have to go to a source like that. 
I said it back when it first came on. I was like, why is there Al Jazeera America? And I watched right. it. Like, this is better than right. American right. regular right. news. Right. Uh, it was at it's that time, out. there was like a taint on anyone who went over to work there. It went out oh, of you're working <laughs> for Arab propaganda. Now people are like, oh, I want to find out what's actually happening. I got to go to Al Jazeera. Yeah. Um, so here, as you saw that White House fence, things got uh, a little rowdy over there, which, of course, a lot of... Uh, a lot of neocons jumped on that. Oh, they're threatening the White House. Shoot the bombs on Yemen now! Hands on Yemen! 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 All right. So any thoughts, Kate? Well, yeah, I mean, you saw all that anger directed uh, rightfully, obviously, at Joe Biden. And this is one of the things that informs my uh, suspicion that the Democrats at the end of the day are going to try and swap him out for a different nominee, uh, thinking that whichever stooge they replace him with will not carry the baggage of having enabled this mass murder to go on. Um, and I think it's really important that um, everyone who's out in the streets communicate that uh, the, the, the same judgment will be rendered upon whichever stooge they prop up. If they put Newsom up, we're not just going to give Gavin Newsom a pass because he wasn't in the White House to do the same thing that Biden is doing now. Uh, I'm going to make a campaign um, sort of coverage trip to New Hampshire uh, over the weekend. And I do plan on going to the town hall events of both Dean Phillips and Marianne Williamson to let them know that uh, uh, should you win, (laughs) should you win the nomination, um, you will be held to the same standard that Joe Biden is being held to. Now, don't think that the Democrat, you know, it's important that uh, people in the streets really communicate this to the Democratic Party en masse. Don't think you're going to swap this mummy out. For a pretty face <laughs> who wasn't there. Hey, they didn't they didn't enable the genocide. They weren't there. No, that that's not gonna fly. And I suspect that they are gonna try and swap Joe Biden out for a number of reasons. That being one of them, because this mass murder that Joe Biden has enabled in Gaza um has alienated uh two key voting groups that the Democrats could not afford to lose. We knew they were gonna really struggle going into this cycle with the same sort of white affluent moderates that they won last time that gave them all those key swing states that they needed. You know, the, you know, suburban sort of independent conservative leaning normies, right? Like they're, they're going to lose those. We all know that they're, they're, they're going to lose those this time, but this genocide has alienated young voters and Arab voters. And those are two constituencies that they just can't afford to lose. And I think they're going to switch. I I don't know this, obviously, but I suspect they're going to try and swap Biden out in the hopes that they can win those groups back by bringing in someone who doesn't have this sort of baggage. And um, we we can't let that happen. Every every time you say swapping Biden out, it's like the president is a kind of tampon. And once it's (laughs) too bloody, you got to get a fresh one. It's just what it is. I, I, I don't know that there's a means to do it because I think at the end of the day, you got this crazy, senile, old bastard with very Nixonian resentments of always having been laughed at by the smart set. And now I'm the president. I don't think he'll willingly let that go any more than Nixon. They got Hunter, right? Can't they use Hunter? He's taking over the family business. <laughs> I, 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 like AJ in, Soprano in, thought in he theory, had. will it work? <laughs> Uh, I mean, you I, want Hunter to go to jail or you want Hunter to walk? I'd vote Hunter. You want and, Hunter to walk? Drop out. And and, and, right? and, and I, don't, that. I don't know if the, that party uh, plays that way. You've seen Hunter's dong? He don't have nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> <laughs> that's That would be a slogan. I, well, that that's going to that's gonna be him and Paris well, Hilton are going to do a he retirement wants video. Anyway. Um, <laughs> and, and on that note... <laughs> keeping keep it keeping it classy here at the Jimmy Dore show. Come see us do a live stand up show. We'll be in Venice, California, Palmdale, California, Omaha, Des Moines, Milwaukee, Lansing, Bend, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, Boston, Massachusetts, and we're going to Europe. Do you live in Europe? 
We're going to be there. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets. (laughs) 